So I'm signed in as Dan and not Deanne. Very can good. you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can. Um, all right. I actually don't even know what we're reading today. I would imagine verse 8 through 16. 8 through 17. 17. Okay. I am going to just hit the go button and hope for the best. <laughs> and I'll do my usual post-processing nonsense manually later. Okay. Um, watch me go to Romans 8. Verse 17. Just kidding. Hey, that's not a bad one. <laughs> but Romans 1. All right, let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thank you for my brothers. Thank you for giving us this motivation to get up early on a Sunday. Make this thing happen. God, meet with us wherever we are mm -hmm. and whatever we're doing. Help us to focus into you. Lay aside distractions for a half an hour and just press into your word and your will. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Two readings. Does that sound reasonable? Sure. Yes. Okay. All right. Let me take one pass and then one of you can do it. Dylan, do you want it or do you want me to do it? Sure. I might have to run to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> Here in a minute. So I'll, I'll give it to you if you want. And I'll take it by default. All right. Paul's longing to visit Rome. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his son, is my witness on how constantly I remember you. In my prayers at all times, oh, let me reread that. God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his son, is my witness how constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray now that at last by God's will, the way may be opened for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I planned many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have had among the other Gentiles. I am obligated, both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish, that is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because of your faith is being proclaimed throughout the world. For God, whom I serve in spirit, 
in the preaching of the gospel of his son is my witness as to how unceasingly I make mention of you, always in my prayers making requests. If perhaps now at least by the will of God, I may succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you in order that I may impart some spiritual gift to you, that you may be established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you while among you, each of us by the other's faith, both yours and mine. And I do not want to be unaware, brethren, that often I have planned to come to you and have pre been prevented thus far in order that I might obtain some fruit from you also, sorry, even as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to foolish. Thus, for my part, I am eager to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For in it, righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous of man shall live by faith. <clears throat> hmm. It's taking me a minute to warm up oh, to yeah. all this. Yeah, this is this is going to be a book of interesting discussion. Yeah. I mean, um storytelling wise, first thirteen was interesting based on the last week or two that we spent Paul putting himself in a position to go to Rome mm -hmm. where a couple, like a year or two earlier, he had written to them and said, I want to come, but I was prevented every time I tried. Yeah. Yeah. And some pretty heavy preventions. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the first time I think that I read 16, where I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and to the Greek. Um, I think I had it in my mind wrong that it was like the Jews were privileged and then the Greeks came along. And I think this is just talking chronologically. Yeah. Um, that hung me up, you know, years ago, but, but, um, yeah, I have a note, um, on verse eight over in the sideline that says Paul's passion. Mm -hmm. I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is being proclaimed throughout the world. That's, that was his life. <laughs> right. Excuse me. Right. That's what he lived for was to have them accept the Lord and then proclaim it to their friends, neighbors, relatives. Do you think it was just a chronological preference toward the Jews? Or do you think that um, by the Abrahamic covenant, they still may have like first dibs at stuff even now. Well, even there it was, it was chronological. I don't think he, mm -hmm. at that point in his life, I don't think he held, um, I don't think he held Jews higher mm -hmm. than Gentiles. I think once it happened that God opened his eyes that said, this is for everybody. I think at that point, then he held them all on the same plane. That's just my my opinion. But yeah, that's an interesting little first to the Jews and then also the Greeks. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. 
Oh, that's right. You're not talking to your cat. No, I'm talking to the yeah, the security guy. <laughs> the watchdog. Um. You know, in the end of nine and the beginning of ten, always making mention and prayers of you. I would I would picture Paul praying, you know, we talked about it before, a, a, a breath prayer, just a bless these people. <clears throat> yeah. He lived that 24-7. Yeah. <clears throat> Darn, excuse me. I found praying like that is actually fairly easy to do too mm -hmm. yeah like <laughs> like a couple times driving to work i'll just get distracted naming off people that i know that i know i'll come in contact with or that i know i just they roll up in my head and i'm like yeah bless them too i don't know why also them oh wow i haven't thought about them in a decade bless them too yeah well and as i as I pass a, a vehicle on the side of the road, you know, mm -hmm. Lord, may that not be a, you know, a costly, extensive repair, whatever it might be, or right. make the tire change and go easy. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, somebody told us years and years ago, those are breath prayers that you pray for somebody or something basically in just one quick breath of air. Mm -hmm. I like that. <clears throat> and I can see him doing that all the time. I like that a lot. Uh, like we just talked about, he... sorry. No, that's fine. Uh, were you guys talking about, I was kind of a little bit late to the conversation, but you were talking about the the order mm -hmm. of yeah. the Jews and then the Greeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, down in verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Yeah, it's yeah, interesting. There's a controversial. Um, <laughs> excuse me, sorry. Well, it's not not really controversial, but um, in the world of progressive Christianity, they consider when uh, I don't remember exactly where it is, but when uh, a woman comes and asks to be either for her to be healed or her son, Jesus says there's um, I've, I've come, I've come for, I've come essentially says I come for the Jews mm -hmm. and I don't have time to mess with, with the dogs. She said, even the dogs can eat the scraps off the table. Yep. Massive paraphrase, something like that. Yeah. And I got a rim injury. <laughs> Oh. It's really, it's really hurting me. Oh. Um, in the world of progressive Christianity, I've, I've heard, I've heard this pastor make, try to make the point that Jesus was actually making a mistake and he was prejudiced. Hmm. <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, the, t the term dogs is like, it's, it's almost, it could be translated like puppies, like, it's not necessarily a term of condemnation or of or insult, although it's, it is a little bit insulting. Um, but he could have been in des testing her faith too. Very true. To see, yeah, there's... to see what her response would be, and she immediately came <clears> back <throat> and, and defended her request, and that you know made it very plain that. Everybody gets it. Even the even the dogs get the scraps. I'll right. I'll take what you can give me. And you follow up on that 
interaction. And he immediately was like, oh, good point. Yes, I will follow through for you. Like, you make a very compelling argument, lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a <laughs> yeah. really interesting interaction. Mm-hmm. I thought about that a, a lot and looked up, you know, people have a lot of interesting things to say about it. But uh, my takeaway was, you know, that the, the gospel comes through the Jewish people. I mean, we're this, this is just how the world works. It has to come from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Right. The seed has to be planted somewhere. So. Yeah. Yep. But but now the point's being made that yes, it was it was through the Jews first. I mean, this is a mm-hmm. thousands of years slow revelation of God to the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. So it, it necessarily has to come through the Jews first. And he makes that point again in the second Romans two verse eleven. He says the exact same thing for God or glory and honor and peace for everyone who. Who does God or t- does good? Sorry, the Jew and also the Greek for God shows no partiality. Right. Romans 2 11. Sorry, I should... uh, t- Romans 2 verse 11. Yep, okay, yeah. And I think they're pointing out, like you said, somebody's got to be first, but they're not the Jews aren't above the Gentiles, they just happen to have been first. Yeah, now that the gospel has been open to everybody. We're all on the same plane. I like that because that's another. It's it's that's another progressive line of Christian thinking is replacement theology, where, well, the Jews rejected it. The Jews are just out by default. Here, here's the Gentiles to replace them, and um, there's a lot to there's a a couple things to speak to that in Scripture, but there's a lot that says that invalidates that. By saying, uh, no, Jews have just as much a chance as anybody else. Mm-hmm. And then you go into like um, the spirit of adoption and all of that cool imagery that allows Gentiles a place in the kingdom as well. I just thought it was horribly condescending the 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 interview that I'm that I'm thinking of with this progressive pastor because he was, he was looking at God in a condescending. Hmm. <laughs> and he's, it was the, uh, the guy asked him, so you think Jesus, you think God made, makes mistakes? Goes, well, hmm. in this case, yes, because he showed prejudice <laughs> and it's like, God, so God makes mistakes he, like that. <laughs> how unbelievably uh, arrogant thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But yeah, I think that's the correct reading of it. Hmm. <laughs> well, excuse me. <clears throat> Ooh. Let's see. I'm liking verse 17. I'm trying to just got the thumpity thump of the music in the background but um verse 17 for in the gospel is a righteousness from god is revealed a righteousness that is by faith from first to last just as it is written the righteous shall live by faith actually there's some interesting cross-referencing things here yeah. and, and mine says to for the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. And I wondered what that kind of meant. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Here is Habakkuk 2, 4. See, he is puffed up. Uh, actually, I'm just going to go from the top of that section. <clears throat> uh, he's talking about, he's talking to the Lord. Habakkuk, second complaint, blah, 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 the Lord's answer. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that an herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and it will not delay. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous will live by his faith. 
Indeed, wine betrays him. He is arrogant and never at rest because he is as greedy as the grave and like death is never satisfied. He gathers to himself all the nations and takes captive all the peoples. And I'm wondering who he's talking about. The wicked foe. Uh, where were you reading from? Habakkuk 2. <laughs> Habakkuk 2. Yeah. That was the cross reference that my Bible put at the end of verse 17 in Romans 1. Uh oh. What? I just lost my video. Oh, well, we can still see you. Okay. I don't dare hit the back arrow because it might screw something up. <laughs> right. <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. I did a little solo study on Habakkuk a while back. That's but, not somebody I've read for several decades. Yeah, it was it was uh this, this essentially the book is about God. All these bad things are happening. I see people that are profaning your name, doing all these horrible horrible things and God's like Do not worry, judgment is upon them. I will take care of it and then he's like okay god thank you <laughs> it's it's it goes kind of deep actually i haven't read that one yet i need to yeah it was um <laughs> essentially it was a precursor to their exile into babylon mm. so it's like you will be uh, you will be handed over to Nebuchadnezzar and all of those guys and then Persia will take over them and you'll still be in exile in Persia and it was only after um, Nehemiah's time that they came back to Jerusalem essentially at least that's how I think the chronology goes there But it looks like Paul's cherry picking from that verse. It's just saying by itself, the righteous will live by faith. Big emphasis on faith, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. just a mini rabbit trail and in that book on verse chapter one verse four i have that verse underlined and i have a notation that says the current u.s uh-huh therefore the law is ignored and justice is never upheld yep. the wicked surround the righteousness and therefore justice comes out perverted mm. yeah, yeah there you go Yeah. It certainly seems seems that way, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't remember making that notation or or why I would have. <laughs> <clears throat> so I guess I have read it in some recent time and mm -hmm. don't remember. Yeah, I've got pretty much the same underline. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, when I just it was one of those. I woke up at two a.m. and I'm like. Well, I might as well use it to read the Bible, open it to a random thing in the middle, and oh, the middle decided to be Habakkuk. Great. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, nice. Very, yeah, very yeah. fitting for what I feel politically. <laughs> yep. Hits home. There's some even that. Could, uh, 
well, so, some people could relate it to. I've been I've been looking into the the controversy that's going on in the Catholic Church right now. Hmm. There's, um, well, I guess there's a lot going on. Um, I don't I don't know a ton. I'm not an expert, but uh, there's there are certain bishops and even certain members of the uh, what are they called cardinal well, say the, the the body that actually elects the pope yeah uh, there's there's at least one that is very vocal about the pope being illegitimate hmm. and um, illegitimately elected and and that he may actually be an anti-pope and uh, evil is pre- pervading like the top levels of the of the church and it's it's uh to, uh, related to um, a focus on what people think uh, would say well that's that's not a spiritual um, that's a, like the, the the topic of climate change is brought up a lot mm. the the possibility of priestesses um, and blessing same sex unions right is be, is being floated uh, that's a big one i'll bet and there's some there's some political turmoil going on right now and it's it's really interesting to to look into that's some pretty radical statements for somebody as high up in the catholic church that's yeah. for sure oh yeah. it's crazy yeah this isn't some <laughs> new uh newly ordained priest this is top this is like four star general above mm-hmm. below the president but if you guys are interested at all i watched this really good youtube video breakdown mm-hmm. and it is <laughs> it's wild like i feel like a 16 year old like gossip yeah like, it's like a reality tv show <laughs> but but yeah it's uh i think they would that that uh the 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 wicked will surround the just and and like pervert society's sense of justice. It's yeah, it's uh, th- there was a there was a quote, and I'm I'm gonna butcher this, but that I heard a priest say the other day. Um, he said the evil that you can see is not nearly as dangerous as the evil that you can't see that pervades. And he was talking about exactly the same thing. Uh, bishops and cardinals and, you know, the, the sexual scandals and being covered up and they just move these priests around and try to cover it up <laughs> instead of rebuking them. Uh, there was, there was still, um, now, I'm, now I'm rambling, but there was some priest, he was higher than a priest. He was like an archbishop or something in, in Spain. I want to say some Latin country. I can't remember, but um, so he, he was not, he's not yet excommunicated, but he was found to have uh, like raped nuns and sexually assaulted um, multiple people over the, over the course of his decades long career. And he's an artist and his artwork is still hanging in the, some important chamber. I think it's like the magisterium chamber mm. <laughs> and they haven't taken wow. it down. Yeah. Just, mm. I mean, I, all that's kind of beside the point, but yeah, there's, it is a fallen world. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Is the point I'm trying to make. One of the underlines I have in verse 16 almost makes me, smile thinking what he's gone through i have um for i'm not ashamed of the gospel underlined you think of all the stuff that he's gone through the beatings the stonings the shipwrecks the missed meals the you know just on and on and on that is such an unbelievable understatement that if anybody can say they're not ashamed of the of the Bible and of the Word and, and the Gospel in its entirety, it's him. I mean, right. Holy cow! 
the kinds of mob riots he seems to stir up everywhere he goes. It's like, how could you be ashamed of that? I'd almost yeah. feel a sense of pride. I'm like, wow. Yeah. I did that. Oops. Yep. Yep. Well, like I said, this is going to be an interesting <laughs> book of the Bible to oh yeah to discuss. Oh yeah. All right. Well, I'm feeling the need to get up and use the restroom too. So I'm gonna. Anybody, any of you feel led to pray? I'll wrap it up. Close this out. Okay. Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your word and the ability to openly and freely read it, discuss it. We pray that it would just draw us near to you. Be with us, lead us, guide us, and protect us this day. It's in your precious and holy name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that I pray. Amen. 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 You guys, you guys have a great day. Oh. You too. You going to be here? Either yeah, of you? I'll be at the nine o'clock. We were up in Estes, um, family crisis, and, and uh, okay. our uh, our niece uh, said, "I'd like to come to church with you today." So nice. We're going to meet them, and and we'll be off the right shoulder of the camera, dude. All right. Well, I'll be underneath uh, the camera, dude, telling him what to do. So, okay. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> you doing? Yeah, I'm going to be in Denver. Unfortunately, okay. We're we're hitting the football game, and nice. Uh, there's there's some there's some stuff we got to do around All right. around the area beforehand. So, unfortunately, okay. Yeah, I need to. <laughs> it's and then I'm working the next Sunday, and then the next Sunday after that at Chick Fil A. Wow. Yeah. So, which is the only day they let me go mm. in there and do my thing mm. being closed on Sunday. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'll, I'll pull it up. I'll, I'll stream it. Okay. okay. Cool. So what did you travels. injure? What did you injure? Dylan? So like, <laughs> it was, it was a rib. Oh, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but it was me and me and Sean went to this metal concert Yeah, last Friday. And I was, I was in the mosh pit and I was going, <laughs> I was bringing, bringing the energy and I think I just caught a shoulder and an elbow, mm. but it, man, it hurts. Rib yeah. injuries are the worst. Yeah, they it are. It keeps, it keeps getting worse too. Mm. I cough in the mornings and it just, that exacerbates it. Ooh, yep. Yeah. Where it's just like, you hope you're, you're going to get into the habit of just grabbing. Okay. Here yeah. it comes. Uh huh. I feel like I've done that too. I don't remember what it was, <laughs> but like dislocated a rib and it eventually worked itself back in or something, but yeah. Yeah, Carry there's not there's nothing it. you can do either. Right, right. You just, have to, you just have to try to minimize movement and let it heal. Yep. All right. But well, all right. I know we'll you keep go, that. So. We'll keep that in prayer as well. All right. Yeah. Just pray for my rib. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. Take care, guys. All right. See ya. All right. See ya. See you guys.